Hello, I'm Dan Garrett, the Executive Director for AARC, and with me today is our current president, Carl Hinkson. Uh, I asked Carl if he would hop on a video chat with me briefly to just further uh, discuss compact licensure. The executive office has received a few questions uh, after we've sent information out. And I know through this process, people, uh, you know, it, it begs more questions. So I thought today we would take a few of the top questions and share them with you. And Carl has agreed to hop on and, and answer the questions. So that is our goal today. So Carl, thank you for jumping on. Uh, maybe you could give a quite simple definition of what compact licensure actually is. Hi, Dan. Thanks for having me on. Uh, compact licensure allows for one multi-state license with the ability to practice in a person's home state and in other compact states. So you can get a compact license in, in a put one state and then work in multiple states. Interesting. Okay. Kind of like the nurses have. Exactly. So why is AARC choosing this time now to pursue compact licensure? Well, during the pandemic and even before, many respiratory therapists travel for their work and sometimes choose to relocate. A compact license will greatly enable someone to be mobile and work in states that choose to pursue the compact. Subsequently, pursuing compact licensure was made a priority in the AARC strategic plan. Our compact is being modeled after the nursing compact. That's right. Uh, and if I remember correctly, when we were talking to the folks at the Council of State Governments who will be overseeing our grant, uh, they mentioned that it's taken a number of years for the nursing profession to uh, accomplish. I believe they have almost 40 states now uh, that that in which they have compact licensure. So I know it took uh, a long effort. And so this is something that will take some time for AARC. Yeah, it's not going to be done overnight. But I think what the most important thing to keep in mind is that we've started the process now. Right. So I talked to, I, I just mentioned Council of State Governments. Maybe you can uh, further explain who they are and what, what they mean uh, through this next question we received. So, uh, the person asked, how is this federal grant from the Department of Defense going to be used? Well, similar to the compact that the nurses have now, our grant will be administered through the National Center for Interstate Compacts, which is a part of the Council of State Governments, or okay. CSG. CSG does not award direct funding as part of this assistance, but will work on behalf of AARC and respiratory therapists to develop activities leading to a compact. This assistance will include the development of model legis legislation, a legislative resource toolkit for states, and the convening of a national meeting of policy, state policymakers to introduce the compact. A kickoff meeting will take place this fall with formal activities beginning in January of 2024. Our grant will run for two years after which we have the opportunity to apply for a phase two grant for further funding to offset the larger costs of developing a national data system. That's great. And uh, I think we were told early on that if we, uh, if all goes well and our, you know, we decide to apply for a second grant, our, our odds and chances are quite good for getting that uh, continuing grant to see the work through. So I know that it will be critical uh, the first couple of years here will be critical to to our work. Um, one other question we had was some states may not choose to participate in compact licensure. Are, is AARC targeting all 50 states? How, how are we going after that? Uh, that's a great question, Dan. Uh, only AARC affiliate states requesting to participate will be supported in this activity. Um, it's important to note that we need a, an initial to identify at least 10 states uh, in order to set forth an action plan, but there is no requirement that a state uh, must participate if it does not want to. Right. And, and you mentioned earlier that part of the work that we uh, will be doing will involve uh, K 
kits uh, and or sort of uh, turnkey tools that can be applied and used in those states. So the ones that do decide to engage will be fully supported through this grant and uh, the Council of State Governments, the work that, that's gonna be produced out of there. So uh, I think that's an, also an important note to, to know that all, any state that steps forward will be supported through this uh, process. Um, so who's working on this project uh, at AARC in terms of people? Uh, well, uh, the a Compact Licensure Task Force was established last year to explore the different models of professional compacts, including cost, how they are funded, and the average time frame necessary from conception to enactment. Uh, the chairperson of this task force is AARC member uh, Mr. Ron Passawald, and he's been doing a great job at this effort. Yes, Ron's done yeoman's work. Uh, so thank you, Ron, if you are watching. Uh, okay, one final question. How are we going to, uh, how is the CSG going to understand our profession's needs? Uh, they're going to form a technical assistance group uh, at the beginning of the compact development process to discuss the unique needs of respiratory of the respiratory therapy profession. A compact technical assistant group will be tasked with making recommendations for the compact document team to consider as they develop language for the model compact legislation. To do this, the technical assistance group members will require a thorough understanding of current practices and historical regulation in the states that will pursue the compact. This field specific knowledge ensures that model legislation is tailored to the respiratory therapy profession. And that's uh, very important to know. So they almost uh, come in and sort of shadow and, and immerse themselves into the respiratory care profession, much like they again have done in nursing. Uh, so we kind of don't have to reinvent the wheel, which is sort of nice. Uh, well, Carl, I wanted to keep this brief and uh, touch on some of these uh, important critical questions uh, from our members. And I also wanna state that we are open and ready and willing to take questions on this topic and others. So keep them coming and we will try to communicate as quickly as possible to answer those questions. So I appreciate everyone jumping on today. And again, I appreciate your time, Carl. All right. Thanks, Dan. It's always a pleasure.